What if? It is uh, yo people, it is I, J Yeep X. Um, this will be what if Luffy had Frieza's powers. <clears throat> this was recommended by somebody in my comments. Uh, I completely forgot who, because it's been a long time since I've checked my channel, which is not a good thing. Um, I'm sorry to that person who I guess waited a lot. Or maybe not for this video. Um, I really am sorry. I just stopped making videos. I don't even know why. So yeah. Um, first, I'm just saying I am not familiar with One Piece anymore because it's been a very long time since I've watched One Piece. So I might get some, you know, parts wrong. I apologize for that. I'm also not familiar with Frieza's power. I only know he can make what? Key beams or whatever. So, yeah. But I, I do know f his new Frieza black form. So, I don't know what he can do. But I just know it is there. And it was able to defeat Goku and Vegeta, I believe. Oh, and also... Happy Valentine's Day. What a coincidence I started making videos again on this day, right? <clears throat> Anyways, this intro is way too long. So, um, let's get started. Um, <clears throat> we start off with Luffy at his hometown, running around. Carelessly, you know, and um, then we're gonna, we're gonna skip right to when Shanks arrives. Luffy befriends him, you know, because he and Shanks had that little connection, so uh, they befriend each other easily. They talk and talk and talk. Up until the bandits arrive. And they just... Chaos just starts going on. They just trash the whole place. They repeatedly ask for beer. Or should I say booze. Which is not here. So... Yeah, they're mad. Now, Luffy is not taking that. So he tries to, you know, do something about it, but uh, it doesn't really work out. And uh, he ends up being captured. Now, the whole village is worried for him because, you know, they treat their people like very, how should I say this? Very good, you know. So they're extremely worried about every single person in the town, village, whatever. Mm, so, um, I'm gonna skip a little to when they catch the bandits, Shanks and his crew and everyone, and they surround them. Now, one of the villains try to threaten, threaten Shanks with a gun. And, you know, Shanks repeats this famous phrase, you know, guns aren't sh just for threats. And then Lucky who just shoots him in the head. Alright. Um so after that all the bandits are alert and they're calling Shanks crazy dad and saying that it was not that deep. It, it wasn't that far, the beef and all that. But Shanks was not having any of that. So he was like Now that you've drawn your weapons You've put your life on the line. And all the bandits look at him in fear as Shanks 
literally is looking dead at them. And uh, he just starts attacking right now. He raises, you know, no, actually, yeah. He raises his sword and he just slashes the bandits, which make them all go unconscious, you know. After that, you know, the leader drops Luffy. And Luffy's, you know, he's, you know, prideful. So he's like, hmm, I didn't need your help, Shanks. You know, I could have gotten out of this by myself. And, you know, Shanks and his crew are just laughing it off. Because they know damn well Luffy wouldn't do anything at all. Uh, after this event, we're gonna go right over to Luffy. After, you know, Shanks departed and all that. And yes, he did give him the straw hat. So yes, it is still he still has the straw hat. And right now he's just wandering around in the forest. And uh he just like I said, Luffy is stupid. So he hits his head on a tree and he just falls down on the back of his head and he falls down unconscious. No, he is not dead. As I said, he falls unconscious. Now Luffy wakes up in a dark place, very dark place, and uh, he just sees a purple and white light because you know his eyes were blurry since he just came to a random place, and you know like he kind of quote unquote woke up, you know, so he had a blurry vision. And then, you know, after his vision stopped being blurred, he saw a creature, not a human, but it was standing on two legs, had a purple, a huge purple thing on top of its head, and it was as white as snow. Luffy was super confused and scared. Remember, he's like, five right now so i mean obviously who wouldn't a five-year-old come on and then frieza looks down to on time and he in his uh, head he's like hmm so i got a useless human as my successor huh even if i had an animal it would be even better than a mere human such weak and fragile creatures. After that, you know, Frieza stopped having his complex in his head and he looked at Luffy again and said, My name is Frieza and you are the successor of my powers. I shall give you power. Use it however you want. I really do not care. I will disappear um, after you've learned every single one of my powers. Is that understood? And then Luffy, um, he just stands up straight and he says, Yes, sir. And uh, in the mindscape, um, they continuously train and train and train. And years and years pass. Uh, in the mindscape, obviously. So after a whole lot of time, uh, Luffy has completely learned every single one of Frieza's powers and uh, also his forms. So yeah, after those years, Frieza disappeared. Luffy did not care at all because, you know, Frieza was a little, or should I say, way too harsh on him. So. He did not miss him at all. But he was, I, mean, I won't say that he was glad that Frieza was dead because, you know, he was useful. He did teach him quite some useful, useful stuff. So, yeah. Anyways. 
So after those years has passed, Luffy wakes up. Yeah. Now he's still five years old. Okay. Nothing has changed except, you know, inside of him. Now he has key. Uh, now he has these forms. Uh, Frieza's golden form. Frieza's normal form that he usually always has. You know, the one on the screen. And he also has the black form. The other ones, not only does he not need them, they're just a really useless. I mean, Frieza's first form is atrocious. You can't even lie. So yeah, he only has those three, which are still useful. Now, uh, Izuku, uh, sorry, Luffy, he uh, goes back to the house. He has been missing for quite some time, about eight hours, I would say. And he encounters Ace. I know, he becomes his friend. Luffy's like really, really good at befriending people. So I'm gonna skip two years. Izuku, uh, sorry. Luffy's seven years old. Uh, he best friends with Ace, and both of them are wandering in the forest right now. Luffy and Ace, they find a little blonde boy who was trying to fight off. Um. An animal, a big, big animal, but he was defenseless, you know, and he was using a pipe as a weapon, so that did not really fit his fighting style. Anyways, uh, after they obviously rescued that boy, uh, the blonde man, the blonde boy, introduced himself as Sabo. Um, he said that he has escaped uh, his old family because he didn't uh, like them because they were um, I forgot their name you know you know those weird old the leaders of the world descendants of whatever yeah you know what I'm talking about I only really forgot it oh world nobles I think that that was the call so yeah so because his family was part of world nobles, you know. And they did quite the bad stuff, which he did not like. So he escaped. Uh, time skip a year again. They all, all three have become inseparable. They're like incredibly best friends. Now for Izuku, uh, he has been training, gaining muscle and all that. Cause, you know, he still wanted, he still kind of wanted to be physically strong. He couldn't just rely on his power. What if it just disappeared? He was thinking ahead like that. And uh, Ace, by the way, has just he found the Mara Mara no Mi, and he devoured it. I mean, without a second thought. And he also has been training. Uh, now, for Sabo, Izuku, like, he felt quite bad. Really, really bad. So, he gave Sabo a key core. Freeze, can Frieza do that? No. Or maybe he can, but we don't know yet. So, he gave Sabo a key core. Yep, made by himself through months of harvesting key and putting it into a secluded place, a ball. And uh, Sabo swallowed it, and he has fire like key. So basically, his key is just like fire. It's not actual fire, but it's like fire. It burns like fire, it does everything like fire, but it's not fire. So yes, his dragon claw fighting style is good. It works. And he can also fly with it. 
But no, he's not intangible. He's still a human, so he's not intangible. Maybe he will learn something along the way. We don't know. Yet. So... I'ma skip. Um, Luffy's about to sail. Ace is already gone. He has sailed. Uh, Sabo... Um, hasn't gone missing. Well, he did tell the, his best friends that... Best friends and son brothers that he was going somewhere and he went one year earlier than ace so now luffy was the only one left and uh, it was now his time to go on an adventure luffy he said goodbye to his village you know and he looks a little different okay he has white hair and uh, yeah that, that's the only difference <laughs> and he isn't stupid and goofy like in the anime maybe a little but he's not like in the anime in the anime he was crazy so since luffy doesn't have a devil fruit water does not affect him which is a really big advantage now we see luffy hopping on the boat he is currently sailing and after about a day he's sleeping in his boat and he suddenly gets sucked into a whirlpool luffy does not really care but you know he doesn't really want to drown even though he won't you know he still doesn't want to go in the water for too long. So, um, Luffy finds a barrel and he hides himself in that. Um, after a, quite the time. Uh, he finds himself being taken by a ship. And that ship is the ship of the old Vida Pirates. So, um... Uh... Old Vida Pirates, they pick the barrel up. And they put it in the storage. And now we see Kobe, who is a pr prisoner of the Alvida Pirates, just goes up to the barrel and opens it. And Luffy just bursts out of it. Kobe is flabbergasted and shocked and scared. So, he immediately asks. Luffy, who he is, and Luffy just says, My name is Monkey D. Luffy. I will become the king of the pirates. And Kobe is, you know, shocked. He is scared. And uh, he's like, Pirate? What are you doing here? And Luffy just says, oh, well, um, I just got lost, you could say, you know, so um, what are you doing here? And Kobe, you know, just explains how he got captured, how he's now basically a slave of Alvida, and how he, become, how he wants to become a fleet admiral. And Luffy, you know. He has some good in him, as usual. Uh, and he's like, Hmm. You know what? I'll help you, kid. Just, uh, don't tell anyone about me, okay? And, um, uh, Kobe agrees. So, um... 
as I was saying, uh, well, Kobe accepted the offer, and Luffy just uh, goes up the stairs of the deck, well, the pirate, the ship, and he sees all the other pirates looking at him, and they're confused. And they're like, they're like, who are you? What are you doing here on this ship? And Alvita turns around and she sees a stranger and she's about to swing her mace at him. But Luffy easily stops it with one hand. And then he points his finger at Alvida. And a little orange ball. A, oh sorry, a purple bar ball appears on his finger. And he shoots it. And it, it goes slowly towards Alvida. And when it hits her, her eyes widen as she gets launched into the air never to be seen again all the Alvida parts are incredibly st scared and they're literally begging Luffy to let them go so Luffy does so he picks them all up with key and he throws them in the ocean and you know, Kobe was watching it from afar and he was relieved and impressed you know, because that was the first time he saw Alvida be defeated. So, uh, they, first of all, replace, you know, the pirate thing with a random one that they found on a random island. And now they're going to, uh, the town where Zoro was at the start of the anime i completely forgot the town name as i said it's been a long time since i watched one piece so they're going to be sailing there after they arrive and luffy drops kobe there never to see him again and he just walks into a random bar wanting food and you know he pays for the food they give him food and there's a little girl walking up to him and she uh touches his, his shoulder and she says hey, hey mister c can you help me save mr zoro i don't want him to die he's too good to die and then luffy looks at her with an eyebrow raising and he's like pirate hunter zoro what is he doing here what do you mean he doesn't deserve to die? What do you mean he's about to die? And the girl, you know, explains to him how he, he's about to be executed. Well, the marine made a deal that he would, if it were to, if he were to star starve for ten days, then you know nothing would happen to the girl. And uh, but then she explains that she heard that the marines were gonna execute him today. And you know, he's. he's Luffy was not happy to hear that because he hated people who didn't respect deals no matter who they were. So Luffy smiled and he agreed. So uh, he stands up and by the way he's like 6'4". That's kind of average in one piece not gonna lie to you. Or below average. Anyways, uh, so yeah, six foot four, and white hair, obviously with the style. And uh, now he's heading towards the marine base. Uh, after a few kilometers walking, 
He arrived and he saw the pirate hunter Zoro tied up, looking miserable, pitiful, and malnourished. Izuku walked towards him, clapping each step he took. And when he was in front of him, he finally said, Pirate Hunter, who we will know as Zoro. Look at this pitiful state you're in. I bet you didn't even know that the Marines were gonna execute you while you were weak. Zoro's eyes widened as he heard that last part. And then he looked at Izuku and he said, So you've come here to help me then? Right? And Izuku nodded. Only because of my honor and pride as a pirate. In fact, you seem to be a great swordsman. So I need you with my crew, alright? And then Zoro looks at him and he says, Fine, if you give me my three swords, I will join your crew. And then Luffy, he just smiles and uh, he closes his eyes for a little and he locates exactly where uh, the swords are. So uh, he developed, you know, an ability where he can just detect things with key. After like a minute, he comes back with the three swords and Zoro is quite impressed that he found them with such ease, you know. And he passes the three swords to Zoro after untying him. And you know, Zoro just, he, uh, he gave Zoro food obviously from the little girl also. Uh, so you know, Zoro, you know, he was, he was full. He was back to normal, back to business, you know. So, they were about to walk out, but all the Marines stopped them. There was Helmeppo, and there was Captain Axham Morgan. Ah, uh, now, by Captain Morgan's order, all the marines try to attack they shot at them try to slice them but both of them were too powerful way too powerful so after a few minutes they're all defeated not dead because izuku didn't sense any ill will from them he just sensed that, you know, they were being forced to do this. They were, you know, yeah, forced, like I said. Uh, so, after uh, defeating all of them, Axe and Morgan was the only one left to finish off. Izuku looked at him and he saw all the malice that he carried this axe hand Morgan. But he was like, Roro no Azoro, I'll let you do the orders, finish him, or at least do some damage. And then Zoro nodded. He took all the three swords in his hands and his mouth and he said, Three sword style. Holy giddy. And he sliced Axe Morgan head clean off. And then, you know, to get rid of the evidence, Izuku just blasted a key beam which disintegrated Captain Morgan's body, uh, leaving only his axe. 
that uh, Izuku Asai Luffy made some special gear to his feet. So he was able to analyze objects, their rarity, and all stuff like that. Just like a video game. But it's not a video game. What if so? Yeah. The item was a common one, which Luffy was extremely disappointed at. But then he saw a little option on the there that said that he could upgrade it with key. So he took the huge axe and he imbued a little key at the edge of the blade, which made it shine purple. Now, after that, he sliced the air right in front of a tree and it got sliced too. He figured that, you know, the key made the blade extremely sharp. And you know, it was a cool collectible. Now, it went from common to high on common tier. Which made Zook, uh, Luffy quite happy at that news. Zoro was also impressed because he never knew that something like that could possibly exist. And you know, he was happy that he chose Luffy as his captain. Uh, so now both of them they take a boat yes a random little boat because they're only two for now so uh after sailing they went on to buggy's island orange town in which buggy was ruling a reign of terror everyone was afraid of him but they found one person that dared to defy him. And that person was Nami. <clears throat> you know, Nami, she obviously tried to steal uh, from Buggy. And she managed to do so successfully. But the only problem was running away from him. That wasn't easy. So after a while she ran into Luffy. Zoro was still sleeping in the boat. So Luffy didn't have to worry about him. Anyways. She ran onto Luffy and Luffy looked at her, towering over her. And uh, he said, Hey there, girl. Are you lost or something? Why are you carrying so many jewels and gold? And then Nami uh, looked at him in hope because he, she, well, he looked powerful to her. And then, you know, and she hugged uh, Luffy and she uh, started crying and, you know, she explained her story to him. And Luffy hearing that was like, oh, wow. Hmm. So tell me, Luffy said, what are you good at? And, you know, Naomi was, was thinking a little and she said, well... I'm a good navigator. I can draw maps. I can navigate people and ships. But then Luffy smiled and he said, "All right then. Would you join my crew as a navigator?" And then Nami was reluctant, but she remembered that Luffy was kind of the only crew she had, you know, free her village. So she accepted. Uh, Luffy saw 
about the worry in her face and she he was like you know what if you want to leave my crew after we save your village you're totally free to do so it's fine and now me relieved smiled and you know he hugged him again and luffy hugged back but you know what they were having their nice moment of course the freaking buggy pirates came in and they started you know screaming and was like you thief you thief when we catch you we're gonna kill you and then luffy as soon as he heard that he was like oh no that is not happening so uh then his hair, hair started turning purple and uh there was purple circles on his hands and feet so then you know he started flying a little and he hit the iconic freeze up pose like in the screen and then he just pointed a key beam at them he just shot it boom causing those two buggy pirates to be sent flying again never to be seen so uh you know after uh, that you know, all the rest of the buggy pirates came in because they wanted revenge and all that and you know, luffy was having fun so he ran to the ship well the boat and uh he woke up zoro and he said come on zoro this is more experience he caught this and you know luffy just told nami to stay in the boat and you know she agreed uh so zoro draws his blades and then luffy uh, says something to him look man i know you really do not enjoy help but i'm gonna help you a little this time so deal with it and then Zoro just looked at him with an eyebrow raised and he was like, in his head he was like, Ugh, it's whatever, if it's the captain, I'll accept it. And then, you know, both, well, off his blade, her blade had, um, the edges of his blade started turning purple uh, again. Not again, but it started turning purple and, uh, As soon as Zoro, you know, slashed the air, one of the buggy pirates lost his leg. And Zoro was deeply impressed. And that story will be continued on the next part. Yes, I am leaving you all on a cliffhanger. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video today. Uh, if you have any suggestions, you know, please make some. But just know that I do not know every anime or manga. So maybe I won't be able to, you know, do what you want, sadly. So peace out and goodbye.